please hit the subscribe button for more content. Hi there, welcome to this follow on video from racingbetdata.com. Um, we did release a video um, a couple of weeks back now looking at um, how you can create your own strategy by exporting data, create your own database, and then how you can test and um, or develop and test your strategy using um, odd and even months. So the video proved really popular. We had a lot of uh, comments, feedback, emails, questions on the back of it, which is really good. Positive to see people using it uh, in the way it's intended. Um, and one of the, the common recurring themes that we were asked is how do how can you uh, interpret more than one data stream into the analysis? So obviously in that example, we were using the stall down the left and we had the Betfair rank across the top. Um, if you haven't seen that video, it's on our channel. I'll pop a link in as well. So you will be able to go and see that one and watch that one first. Um, but this video will be showing you one of the ways in which you can incorporate more than one uh, data stream or filter selection into your outputs. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the racingbetdata.com dashboard and I'm going to export the whole of March 2024's data. Now we have a full month. I'm just going to send that to Excel and I will pop it into my database. So as I said in that video, this is something that all of you can do. Advanced member, you don't have to update it every day. Uh, you can export this data weekly, monthly, however suits. As you can see, it's already exported for me there. Um, I've got the file. That's a month's worth of data. And I'm going to pop it into my spreadsheet and maintain my database. It's something you can all do. Really simple. Let's get on to the Excel database that I've built. So here's the database. I've pasted in the uh, March data here. Now it's sorted alphabetically. You can obviously sort it how you like. That's why it's not chronologically chronologically ordered in this. It doesn't really matter. I've got the full month of uh, March in there. Um, like I said, it's filtered um, first on track and then by date chronologically. You can uh, change that ordering if you so desire um, before you output it. You can select um, by sorting the, um, by clicking on the columns, output it to screen first, sort the columns, and you can export it. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Let's get into the um, the details. This is the same sheet that I'm using that I used in part two. So we have the two tabs, which is develop and test. Uh, the develop uh, based on even months, so we've got the true, and test is uh, based on the odd, uh, odd months. That's why we've got a false. Um, so, like I said, that video covers all that. I'm not going to go over the same ground again. But what I am going to get into now is a way in which you can then add additional filter controls to this table. So the table should be familiar to you. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, use this to, to to try and create a system. I'm going to be showing you a technique in Excel as to how you can then add these extra layers, uh, filter controls to your data dashboard um, database that you've built from the data from our dashboard. So the simplest way to do that is by click clicking on Pivot Table Analyze and then inserting what's called a slicer. Now, a slicer or more than one slicer will allow you to control these two pivot tables or more than two, however many you want, in tandem um, and give you an ad uh, additional filter controls. So let's say that we want on here, let's put track, and I've got track in here, but I'm going to take that out in a second. Uh, let's put track in there. Uh, let's put in, what else do we want in here? Um, so we could have a number of runners, for instance. Uh, I'm not going to use all of these, but I'm just going to add them in. Uh, RBD rank, uh, the R ranking. Um, days since last time out, you can have in there. Uh, last time out position, whether the horse is a course winner, whether it's a distance winner, whether it's up and trip. Uh, we don't really need any of the odds filters in there um, because um, those will only be known at the time of the race. Um, so we're just going to use these as our filter controls. Now, if I click OK, what it's going to do is spit out five or six little tables here that we can then pop somewhere. We can. So this is on you, really, to however you want your layout. But you could have all of these down the uh, left hand side or you can have them around the bottom however you want to display them 
Now, depending what version of Excel you have will depend if you have this as a control option or not. I believe uh, anything Excel 2010 onwards has filter controls. So, you know, you're talking nearly 15 years old. So if you're using an earlier version of Excel than that, it's perhaps time <laughs> to upgrade. Um, but that's, you know, that's entirely up to you depending on how much you use it. But th this is what the slicer option will give you. Now, first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to take out this track from here as to not to confuse anybody. So take out track. I'm going to go to the test uh, tab as well, show the field list and take out track. I can untick it or whatever you want to do. So now I've got unfiltered data. OK, so this is all the data in the dashboard. Now what I'm going to do is link these pivot, uh, these slicers by going to slicer and report connections and link them. So it's linked to the dev um, table, which is this one here, pivot table. It's not linked to the test one. So I'm just going to go in and click on report connections for each one of these and link it. And what that means is when I make a filter control uh, adjustment on, uh, on this page, on this um, tab, and it affect this table, it will also do the same on the test table or the test tab. So we're looking at the same data. And this is the whole purpose of what I went through in uh, video two, is making sure we're not backfitting or back fashioning data and it's consistent. So those are all linked. Now let's go back. So we had Kempton on. Let's go back to Kempton just for the sake of it. Click Kempton here. Now you'll see that pivot tables change and that is now just the Kempton race data and the same here, we've linked it. So this is now just showing Kempton. Look at this figure 3459 down the bottom here and 3260. I'm just gonna select days, uh, last time out position, uh, let's say it won the race last time. You'll see this change. So minus 266, minus 323, okay? So these slices enable you to set your control filters how you desire, whatever they may be. Now I've just picked these seven random ones in here. There's, you know, like I said, no rhyme or reason, so don't get um, hung up on why I've selected these and not others. It's purely for demonstration purposes. And you know, the fact I've selected selected last time out position one, totally irrelevant. I've just done that just to demonstrate how these tables interact with each other and change, and they're all controlled by these slices. So to clear that, just click the filter control at the top. Now, if you wanted to select all of the data in there, bar the um, the last time out first, you can hold the control key and click on number one, and you can see that that changes the data and it's basically included everything in there, bar number one. So hold the control key and it clears, um, it, it deselects the option you're on. Now you can hold the shift key and select more than one. So if I'm, I'm holding sh shift here, now I can select multiple different ones. Um, and again, you can clear that. If I just want to select one, you simply just click on it. If I clear it, if I just want to uh, unselect that one, hold the control key and click on it, and it unfilters that one item and selects all the rest. So really simple to use slices. Uh, and as ever, like I said, if you're not familiar, this video is to introduce them to you, show them the basics of how they can use, of course, if you want. Uh, to understand a little bit more, go into a bit more detail, then uh, Google is the wonderful place of free resource for, for all of us uh, that we can um, uh, access and find out what uh, information we need. Now, I'm just going to show you how you can then look at another step beyond this. So let's look at um, how many horses meet our criteria. So that's another aspect. One is looking at the value and you create the system and you look at, um, you develop it, is it profitable? Yes, brilliant. Well, let's look at it in test. Is it profitable? Ah, no, it's not. Well, that straight away says that's just pure luck. What you've looked at, there's no, um, there's nothing tangible in there to tell you that that is a reliable system. This is a very quick way of doing it. But if you develop something, saw it look profitable, you looked at it in test and it shows the same, then that can lead you towards um, the path of perhaps this needs, there's some substance to this and it needs monitoring. It doesn't mean, I want to reiterate again from part two, it doesn't mean that, that because you've developed it and tested it and they both show profitable doesn't mean that that's going to be the case going forward. It absolutely does not, um, but it gives you an indicator as to, okay, this might be something worth pursuing. 
continue the paper trading if you have to involve yourself at small stakes, as we did in the video. We demonstrated that at 50p or, um, level, then um, then you can do so. Um, it's it's your call. I'm not going to tell you and instruct you what to do. I'm only giving advice and guidance here um, to show you how you can use the data to your advantage. Anyway, let's put dev count and another uh, sheet in here. And call this one test count rate spelling. Okay, so let's go to the dev count. Now what we're going to do is just knit this pivot table by far and away the, the simplest way to do it. Copy the whole thing. Uh, pop it in here. And now what we want to do is instead of showing the sum of the place return, and obviously you can use, um, so that we've used that as a value output, the place return. Now, another thing you could use, you, um, you could use the SP win return or the each way return. So that's your, your profit loss to the bookmaker. You've got Betfair win return. Uh, you've also got the Betfair lay return. Uh, you've got the um, place return and place lay return. So obviously I've kept that in from our previous video where I was looking at the place market in isolation, but you've got those other um, options if you want to look at the profitability uh, based on those odds as well. Um, let's just bung in date of race and as a count, and this shows you how many um, horses meet that criteria. Now what I need to go back to do is link our slices or check that they are automatically linked which they are in this count uh, case. You can see dev count is automatically linked because I've stolen this pivot table from here. Uh, that should well be. So anything I change in these slices now will not only affect uh, the table, the profit table in the dev tab, it will affect the profit table in the test tab, but it will also affect the, uh, the number of horses shown in the dev count. So this will give you some confidence if you're looking at something and thinking, well, I want to look at horses that come out of stall four and they're um, four to 10 and their favorites, we can see that is profitable on your development. And then we go to the count and we look at how many horses in there. Okay, 460, which is a reasonable size. If we start filtering this down and start putting in, uh, was a course winner, was a distance winner, not up in trip, and then go to the dev count, you can see we're down to 68. So the variability is much greater the, the smaller number of um, horses in your sample size. So that's why you can uh, add that in as a separate tab and it will control it in the same way. Let's do the same for the test. Uh, select the entire pivot table. We're just going to control C and then control V to paste it. And once again, we're just going to take out the place return and we'll just add that into count. And that gives you your numbers in there. So you can see 681, 714. You can compare those. They should always be relatively similar depending on the criteria you've used. And then one final thing you can do, you can create um, like an overview table. So let's say um, you want to check out the profitability of, I don't know, let's say we're looking at backing all horses uh, six, seven, and eight rank because they're profitable in here. So uh, dev profit. And what you would do here is just select six, seven, eight in here. Let's do it another way. Six plus seven plus. Okay, that gives us our profit. Uh, then we can say dev count. And we can do the same in here. So you can say uh, equals six plus seven plus eight horses. Okay, and then what you can do is say uh, test profit underneath. And what you can actually do is just change in here. This is the quicker way to do it. Um, you can put instead of dev, put test, it should work. Test, test. Because all these pivot tables intertwine, you can see there that the profit automatically pulls through. Um, let's call that dev horses. 
uh, test horses and you can do the same in here as well so instead of dev count this becomes test count dev count test count dev count becomes test count missed I start the little apostrophe there haven't I and I've done it there as well look brilliant and there there you go. So 150 there, 154 there, 150 there. So just to go in and check that, verify it. Six, seven, and eight, 150 down the bottom. Go to our control sheet. Let's bring it over here, call it control. And there you have it. Now, what you can also do is if you wanted to bring these filters over, um, slices over, I'm just going to um, copy this one. I should be able to paste this in here. Now you should be able to control it all from here. So let's have a look at the same from uh, Leopardstown, for instance, pop it on here, Limerick. There isn't any test ones there. So let's have a look, Epsom, Ferry House, whatever you want to do. So you could effectively bring all of your pivot slices into here uh, and control your um, pivot tables from one sheet and have your results that you want to see pulling in here. Now, obviously, this assumes that we're looking at Betfair rank um, six, seven, and eight. Now, that obviously might be different, but you can specify that as a range in here as well. Um, so you don't have to link those uh, dynamically in, into the um, formula. There are additional ways in which you can do it. But again, as I said, with this video, it's a very quick guide as to, to, to send you on the right track to enable you to use the data quickly, effectively, and efficiently, uh, and show you some of the capabilities in Excel that you might not be aware of. So I, I do hope that this video has answered some of those common questions that we had around how you can uh, manipulate your, um, your pivot tables to include more than just the two um, selection criteria that we spoke of in that original video. Uh, and there will be a, a link to that um, video coming right up. So if you haven't seen it and you've watched this one first, please do check that one out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more useful content.